Hello and welcome to edupediaworld.com. In this session, we'll be discussing about a fourth type of market structure that is oligopoly. As compared to other type of market structures that is perfect competition, monopoly and monopolistic competition market, our oligopoly, this type of market structure is a bit complex in nature. Now, let's see why. Let's first look that uh, how do we define oligopoly. Oligopoly is defined as a market structure in which there are few sellers selling homogeneous or differentiated products. Homogeneous product, for example, oil companies, differentiated products, for, for example, automobile companies. Now, here as compared to other type of market structure, we see here that the number of sellers are neither is neither one and nor large number of sellers. It's few number of sellers. Then where oligopoly firms sell a homogeneous product, that is for example oil companies, it is known as pure or homogeneous oligopoly. And where oligopoly firms sell differentiated products, for example automobile company, TV manufacturing company, it is called differentiated or heterogeneous oligopoly. Now let's see some worldwide examples of oligopoly type of market structure. We see here that Price, Waterhouse Coopers, KPMG, Deloitte, Ernst and Young, they dominate the accountancy market. They actually uh, capture maximum portion of the market share in accountancy market. Similarly, three leading food processing companies that is Kraft Foods, PepsiCo, Nestle, they together achieve a large proportion of global processed food sales. Then Boeing and Airbus have a duopoly. Duopoly means they, there are just two uh, competitors present in this particular oligopoly or the airliner market. Then Microsoft, Sony and Nintendo dominate the video game console market. Then similarly Nestle, Hershey Company and Mars incorporated together make most of the confectionery made worldwide. So these are some worldwide examples of oligopoly market. Now let's understand oligopoly more clearly with the help of the characteristics of oligopoly type of market. The first one is that whatever firms are there in a oligopoly market structure, they aim at maximizing their profit conditions. Then they are not the price takers, like they have enormous amount of control over the price structure. They can make the price instead of taking the price set by the industry. Then in oligopoly type of market structure, entry is very hard because there are significant barriers to the entry in this particular industry. Exit is easy, but entry is very hard. Then the number of firms here are few. Then in oligopoly type of market structure as compared to monopolistic competition and perfect competition, they are able to earn long run profits. In the long run, they are able to earn profits. Then there, the products which they sell can be differentiated as well as they can be similar to each other. Then there's perfect knowledge. There is perfect knowledge amongst the sellers, especially that what other seller is doing because there are few number of sellers and they know whatever moves are being taken by other sellers in the market. Then interdependence. This is a very important characteristic of oligopoly market because there are few number of sellers. So they are all interdependent upon each other. Any type of move by one firm affects all the firm and that too enormously. Then there is non-price competition. Basically, they compete on the basis of advertising and other strategies uh, rather than the price cutting and all. So these are some major characteristics of a oligopoly type of market. Now I suppose that you have some idea that what is a olig oligopoly type of market. Let's now discuss some models uh, for price and output determination under oligopoly market. So we will start with Sweezy's kinged demand curve. We will understand this model and uh, see that how price and output is determined under this model in the short run and in the long run. Now let's see how. See, under this model that is Sweezy K 
kinked demand curve we have heard about normal demand curves but we have never heard this word kinked we'll understand this very elaborately but let's see what are the assumptions under this particular model the first assumption is that here the firms which are involved in this particular type of model that is in this particular type of market is structure they react to price cut that if a particular firm cuts down its prices the other firms in the market simultaneously go for the same action that is they also reduce their prices and the second assumption is that the firms here they don't react to a price rise suppose if a firm takes a decision to rise its price in order to improve its profit level the other firms will not react to the price rise so these are the basic two important assumptions now let's see that how does a firm under this particular model gets a king to demand curve let's see that now suppose there is a firm and it takes a decision to increase the prices now under this particular model because there is a assumption that the firms in this type of market structure won't react to the increase in the prices so other the prices of other firms product is lower so the customers of this particular firm will shift instantly to the products of other firms because there are a small number of sellers and there is a bit competition in the market so they will simultaneously shift to the products of other firms so what will happen to the demand curve for a increase in the prices the demand curve will be elastic in nature that is it will be like this this will be the demand curve of this firm that is suppose if the original price was p and the quantity sold was q when the firm increases the prices by suppose p1 the quantity which he was selling falls down and that to the fall is enormous is very large that is suppose the quantity falls down to q0 so we get a elastic demand curve that is the customers are very sensitive to the price changes because other firms are selling their product at lower prices now this is one situation the other condition is that the firm decreases the prices now what happens when the firm decreases the prices because the other assumption is that when the when a particular firm under this type of market structure decreases the prices other firms react instantly and they also cut down their prices so the change in the demand will be not very much if it decreases the prices supposing that it will get very increased demand it won't happen the demand will only marginally change so the demand curve under this situation will be inelastic like this this will be the demand curve for a decrease in prices by the firm suppose its price was originally p and the quantity sold was q so when it decreased the price to p0 the quantity sold will only change to q1 and the change you can see is very small so by these two assumptions if we summate these two graph we get a kink in the demand curve and it would be like this that is initially the prices the demand curve was elastic for a rise in price and as soon as the firm decreased the prices the demand curve became inelastic for a fall in price so this is the demand curve which the firm gets 
by now you must have learned that on x axis whenever we denote a demand curve on x axis we take the quantity and on y axis we take the prices so now you know that why do we get a kink in the demand curve this is the kink and for this kink the price is p and the quantity is q now following the same behavior what happens to the marginal revenue is that marginal revenue initially also decreases but as i told you that it always decreases at a faster pace as compared to the average revenue because this curve also shows the average revenue so what happens is the marginal revenue curve will decrease then it will become constant following the kink this particular point up till this particular level it will become constant and again it will start decreasing this is the marginal revenue curve of the firm due to this kink the marginal revenue for a certain time period that is up till this point suppose i name it this point as m and this point as n so between this point the marginal revenue curve will became become same that is will be constant such that if at any point between m and n if the marginal cost curve cuts the marginal revenue curve at any point between m and n the quantity the profit maximizing quantity and the price would be same you can see this at any point if the marginal cu cost curve is cutting between m and n the profit maximizing quantity and the price would be same and beyond any point above m if the marginal cost is cutting the marginal revenue curve the profit maximizing quantity and the price will change similarly beyond any point after n if the marginal cost cur curve cuts the marginal revenue curve then also the quantity the profit maximizing quantity will change so now i suppose that you have understood the concept of kinked demand curve like in other type of competitions also in the short run what happens like how the quantity the profit maximizing quantity and how the profit maximizing output it is actually determined in the short run let's see what happens under this model in the short run there can be three possibilities that is the average revenue is equals to average cost the average revenue is greater than average cost and the average revenue is less than average cost so the first condition is that average revenue is equal to the average cost so here we see we get a king demand curve and simultaneously we get a marginal revenue curve this is this is the demand curve this is the marginal revenue curve so if the marginal cost curve cuts the marginal revenue curve here at this particular point this is a marginal cost curve we get the profit maximizing output at q and if we extend this curve to the demand curve we get the price so if a situation if we get the if we want if the average cost if this particular for this particular situation that is normal profits the average cost should be equal to the average revenue and this demand curve shows the average revenue also 
So we get a curve like this. This is the average cost curve. So we can see here that the average cost is equal to average revenue. So, so this is a situation of normal profits. Now for the second condition that is super normal profits. This is the demand curve and this is the marginal revenue curve. Suppose the marginal cost curve cuts here. So we get the profit maximizing quantity and the profit and the price. For super normal profits, we get a curve like this which shows that the average revenue is greater than the average cost and by this amount. So this is the amount of profit. So this is the second condition that is super normal profits. Likewise. If the firm under short run is making losses, this is the marginal revenue curve, this is the demand curve, this is the marginal cost curve, this is the profit maximizing quantity, we extend this to the demand curve, we get the price. And this is the average cost curve, which shows that the average revenue is less than the average cost and by this amount. So this is the amount of our losses. So this is the third condition that is firm is incurring losses. So see in the long run, if suppose a firm is into this condition in the short run, that is it is making super normal profits. So what will happen in the long run because there are significant barriers to entry so other firms cannot enter seeing the profits of oligopoly type of firms in the long run. So the firm will continue making super normal profits in the long run. Similarly, suppose if the firm is making losses in the short run, so what will happen in the long run that the Firm, some firms will try to leave the market in the long run. So the customers of those firms will shift to the existing firms in the long run and so the existing firm again will be will start making profits in the long run. So there can be only two conditions in the long run. The graph will appear like the same but there can be just two conditions that is average revenue is equals to average cost and average revenue is greater than the average cost means that in the long run under this oligopoly type of market the firm can either make normal profits or can make super normal profits they can never run into losses so now i suppose that you understand the concept of king demand curve and uh, how price and output is determined under short run and long run in King demand curve. So concluding upon the Sweezy's King demand curve, we can say that it is useful when we see an oligopoly industry that does not change much in terms of pricing and output decisions. Now what does this mean? This means that this is a particular situation that is where the marginal revenue becomes stable. So it, at this particular situation, the oligopoly, the firms in the oligopoly industry are not changing much in terms of their price and quantity decisions. So this particular model is very helpful in analyzing this behavior of firms that why it is not changing the price and quantity decisions because they get a kink in their demand curve they are not able to take decisions because the firm are interdependent upon each other a lot so marginal cost can come through in a in a large range and not change p or q we have seen there that if at this particular point if the marginal cost 
comes here or here or here the pr uh, price and quantity will not change so concluding upon i and i i assume that you have understood the concept very clearly in the next session we will be concluding with the price leadership model this is the other type of model of oligopoly type of market structure till then have a nice time and thank you for watching edupedia world